Fala, gente bonita! Muita gente gostou da história que eu coloquei aqui em inglês para alunos intermediários. Então, eu vou colocar a outra história para alunos intermediários também para você curtir e aprender mais vocabulário. Se você entender 80% a mais, essa história é perfeita para você poder repetir ela talvez 5 ou 10 vezes. Cada vez que você repetir ela, eu prometo, você vai aprender uma palavra nova. Então, se esse é você... Vai lá, assiste a história, diz aí para mim nos comentários qual foi, qual foi a porcentagem da história que você entendeu. Ah, talvez 80, talvez 85, talvez 90, talvez 50. E eu vou te dar uma dica de como usar essa história para aprender mais palavras, tá bom? Sem mais ah, demora, aí vai a história para você. Ou oh, demora pra caramba pra fazer esses vídeos. Deixa um joinha aí, vai. On Saturday, the 31st of October, 1964, a man arrived in the village. It was late in the evening. He was looking for somewhere to stay the night. He knocked at a door, and a woman opened it. Good evening, madam, the man said. I'm sorry it's so late, but can you help me, please? Is there a hotel in this village? I want to stay here tonight. The woman laughed. A hotel? Here in Wood End? No, sir, I'm afraid there isn't. What a pity, said the man. I'm a stranger here, and I want to see your village tomorrow. The stranger was very polite. He was tall and had dark hair, and he had strange green eyes. Perhaps Mrs. Harrison can help you, the woman said. She has a room. Perhaps you can stay with her. Wait a minute. I'll get my coat and I'll take you there. The woman took the stranger to Mrs. Harrison's house. Mrs. Harrison gave him a room for the night. He was very glad. It was the last night of October and it was cold. The next day was Sunday. The man looked round the village. He was very interested in the history of the village. He met some of the villagers and asked them their names. But he did not visit the church. That was unusual. The church in Wood End was the most beautiful building in the village. But the stranger was not interested in it. He did not go to church that night with all the villagers. It was the first Sunday evening of November. When the villagers came out of the church, the man had gone. They had all liked him. The ladies had thought he was very good-looking. A few weeks later he came back. It was the first Sunday in December. The villagers were coming out of church. It was cold and dark. Hello, he said. I'm back again. It's nice to see you all once more. His next words surprised everyone. Perhaps you can help me, he said. I'm looking for a house. I want to buy a house here. Here, someone said. But why here? There's no work in Wood End for a young man. All the young people leave the village. They find work in Lydney, the nearest town. I'll get a job somewhere, the stranger said. Perhaps in Lydney. Then one of the villagers told him about old Mr. Smith's house. Mr. Smith had died in the summer. His house was empty. It was for sale. The house was on the corner of Main Street and Church Lane. I'll ask about the house tomorrow, said the young man. Perhaps I'll be lucky. Goodbye. I'll see you soon. The villagers watched him leave. They all saw his car. It was very big and luxurious. He looked rich. A few days later, Mr. Smith's house was sold, and in the middle of December the young stranger arrived. He moved into the house and worked very hard. He fixed the roof. He repaired broken windows. He painted and decorated. He changed the whole house. But there was a big surprise for the villagers. On the morning of Monday, the 21st of December, they saw a big sign on the front of the house. And on the sign were these words. The Corner Shop, Proprietor Dave Slatin. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The villagers could not believe it. A shop in Wood End. Everybody talked about it. 
There was once a shop in Wood End, but it had closed twenty years ago. Some people wanted the shop, but others did not. The villagers met in the evening in the village hall. Everybody was there. Everybody was interested in the new shop. The corner shop is a good idea, someone said. We need a village shop. We won't need to go to Lydney. Then Mrs. Harrison spoke. She liked the stranger, Dave Slayton. I agree, she said. A village shop is a good idea. It's too quiet here. Wood End needs a shop. Nonsense," said Miss Brown. She was the village school teacher. Lydney is not far away. There are lots of shops there. Soon everybody was shouting. Then Mr. Hart spoke. He was a very big man with a loud voice. "Listen, everybody!" he shouted. "We've never had trouble in this village before. We've always been quiet and happy. Now this shop is causing trouble." Let Mr. Slayton speak," someone said. "It's his shop. Let him speak." Ladies and gentlemen," said Dave Slayton. "I don't want to cause any trouble. I'm still a stranger in your village, but I want to be one of you. I want to be your friend. I like the people of Wood End." He smiled, and a few people clapped. They liked him. The corner shop will sell lots of things," he went on. "It will sell food and things for the house. Everything will be cheap, I promise." Everybody was listening carefully. "And I have another idea," he continued. "I'll sell village products." "What do you mean by village products?" asked Miss Brown. "I'll tell you, Miss Brown," he said. "I know that you make beautiful bread and cakes." Miss Brown smiled. Yes, she did make bread and cakes. Everyone knew that. And you, Mister Hart, I've seen your flowers. You grow beautiful flowers. Now, Mister Hart smiled. Yes, his flowers were beautiful. Everyone knew about them. And Mister Everett makes pots. Someone said. And Missus Davis makes dolls. Said another voice. And I do paintings of the village. Said old Miss Lucy Gray. Yes, said Dave. You can all do something. You villagers are clever. You make lots of things. We can sell them to the tourists. In the summer, Wood End can make a lot of money. But what about the money? Said Mister Hart. How will you pay us? That's a good question, said Dave. And here's the answer. You'll bring your things to me. And I'll sell them for you. I'll keep some of the profit. You'll have the rest. What a good idea," said Miss Brown. "Yes, I agree," said Mister Hart. All the villagers agreed. Everyone in the village was happy with Dave Slayton's plan. The corner shop opened on Monday, the fourth of January, nineteen sixty-five. Soon the shop was busy, and Dave needed an assistant. The new assistant in the corner shop was Anna. She started work in late January. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Dave Slayton kept his promises. Things at the shop were good and cheap. How does he do it? Asked Mrs. Harrison. It's winter, but he's selling lots of fruit and vegetables, and they're cheap. I never go to Lydney now. The other villagers agreed. The corner shop was a success, and Dave seemed happy. He paid Anna good wages. Sometimes her friend Peter helped at the shop, and Dave gave him money too. Dave advertised in newspapers, and the village products sold well. People from Lydney came to the corner shop. There were lots of visitors, and Wood End became more interesting. The villagers were surprised but pleased; they were making a lot of money. Dave lived alone in a flat above the shop. He was very popular in the village, 
But no one ever went to his flat. No one ever saw inside it. At the bottom of the stairs there were two doors. One led into the stockroom. The other door had a notice on it. Special orders only. Keep out. The door was always locked. Anna never went into the special orders room. Why do you lock that room, Dave? Anna asked one day. What's in there? It's for special orders, he replied. Big orders. But you won't get any big orders in Wood End, said Anna. Dave said nothing. He did not want to talk about that room. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. For three months, everything was normal. Then, one day in April, an unusual customer came into the shop. The new customer was a very beautiful woman. She was wearing expensive clothes and arrived in a large car. Is this the corner shop? the woman asked. She looked round and seemed a little surprised. Yes, replied Anna. This is the corner shop. It's the only shop in the village. I'm looking for Mr. Slayton, the owner of the shop, said the woman. I think he's upstairs, said Anna. I'll go and get him. Does he know your name? Yes, I think so, was the reply. Tell him... The woman stopped. Tell him Miss Gordon is here, Miss Greta Gordon. Anna was amazed. Are you Greta Gordon the film star? Yes, that's right. The woman smiled, but she was nervous. Wait a minute, said Anna. I'll tell Mr. Slayton that you're here. Anna ran to the bottom of the stairs and called, Dave, Dave, there's someone to see you. Who is it? asked Dave from upstairs. Miss Greta Gordon, shouted Anna. It's Greta Gordon, the film star. I'm coming, he said, and he came down immediately. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Gordon, he said. Good morning, said Greta Gordon. She and Dave shook hands. She had beautiful hands, and she was wearing beautiful diamond rings. Anna had never seen so many diamonds before. Miss Gordon looked round. Is this where you work, Mr. Slayton? she asked. Once again she seemed nervous. Yes, said Dave. It's a small place, but it's big enough for me. Please follow me, Miss Gordon. Anna was surprised. Dave and Greta Gordon did not know each other. He did not call her Greta, and she did not call him Dave. He seemed to be in a hurry and she seemed to be frightened. Anna watched them. Dave and Greta Gordon went to the back of the shop and into the special orders room. Greta Gordon was a special order customer. Anna thought that was very strange. She wanted to tell someone about Greta Gordon. Anna loved films. She wanted to tell Peter about the film star, but she had to stay in the shop. Ten minutes later, Greta Gordon came out of the special orders room. Dave went straight upstairs, and Greta Gordon came to the front of the shop. The film star looked terrible. She was pale. She was crying. Her eyes were red with tears. "'What's wrong?' asked Anna. "'Can I help you, Miss Gordon?' "'No, thanks. I'm all right,' said Greta Gordon." Do you want to sit down? said Anna. She got a chair, and the film star sat down. Shall I get the doctor? said Anna. No, no, said Greta. Please tell no one about my visit here. Please tell no one. Anna was disappointed. She wanted to tell everyone about Greta Gordon. She wanted to tell everyone about her famous customer. I want to give you something, said Greta Gordon. Here's a photograph of me. I'll sign it. She signed the photograph and gave it to Anna. Please keep this, said Greta, 
And please, keep our secret. Please don't tell anyone. All right, said Anna. I promise. The film star kissed Anna. She held Anna's hands. What a beautiful woman, thought Anna. And what beautiful hands. Then Anna noticed something. The diamond rings were gone. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Dave never talked about Greta Gordon. He never talked about her visit to the corner shop. One day, Anna asked him about the film star. How do you know Greta Gordon? said Anna. Is she a friend of yours? I don't want to talk about her, Dave replied. She was a special order customer. Don't ask any more questions about her, Anna. So Anna did not ask any more questions. She did not ask about Greta Gordon's special order, and she did not ask about the rings. Anna kept her promise. She never told anyone about the film star. Soon it was spring. Anna and Dave were busy. Mr. Hart brought lots of flowers to the corner shop, and Anna sold them to the tourists. There were lots of tourists that year. In May, Peter asked Anna to marry him. She said yes. They became engaged. They planned to get married in the following year. Now they needed money, so they worked hard and they saved. They were very much in love. On Saturdays, Peter played football or cricket, and Anna often went to the cinema in Lydney. He enjoyed sports, and she loved watching films. One day, Anna was reading Film News. This was a magazine about film stars. She turned the pages. There was a picture of Greta Gordon. Anna was pleased. What a surprise! Beautiful Woman was going to be a big film. And now Greta Gordon had the star part. Anna wanted to tell Peter about Greta, but she kept her promise. She did not tell anyone. But she did show film news to Dave Slayton. Look, Dave, she said, here's a story about Greta Gordon. Isn't it great? She's got the big part in Beautiful Woman. Dave looked at the magazine. Greta Gordon will star in Beautiful Woman. The star of Beautiful Woman was Joanna Lee, but Miss Lee has broken her arm. I don't know what happened, said Miss Lee. I was in my bedroom. I slipped and fell. Greta Gordon will now be the star of Beautiful Woman. I'm so lucky, Greta told us yesterday. I've always wanted the part. I can't believe it. I don't know anything about films, he said. Is Greta Gordon a big star? Anna laughed. Big star? Yes, she is. She's terrific. Dave didn't seem interested. I hope she's happy with her big part, was all he said. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Summer tourists were arriving in Wood End. The weather was beautiful and the shop was doing well. But Anna was not very happy. She often thought about Greta Gordon's visit. Why had she come to see Dave? What had happened to the diamond rings on her fingers? There was another problem. Anna loved Peter and she was going to marry him. But she liked Dave too. Dave was older but she liked him. All the women liked him. But Anna was very close to him all day. In the daytime, Anna was with Dave. In the evening, she was with Peter. Anna was living two lives. One life was with Dave, the other life with Peter. Then one Friday, Dave surprised Anna. What are you doing tomorrow? he asked her. 
Would you like to spend the day with me? We can go anywhere you like. We can go in my car. I'm sorry, Dave, said Anna, but Peter wouldn't like it. Don't be silly, said Dave. We won't go far. I'll close the shop at lunchtime and we can go to Lydney. Anna wanted to go with Dave, but she was worried about Peter. Don't worry about Peter, said Dave. He is always busy on Saturday. Anna thought for a moment. All right, she said. You take me to the best cinema and to the best restaurant. Then I'll come with you. Of course, laughed Dave. Anything you want, Anna. So the next afternoon, Dave and Anna went together to Lydney. They had a good time. Dave bought Anna a new, expensive dress. Then they went to a cinema and afterwards to a restaurant. Peter played cricket that Saturday. He never knew about Anna's day with Dave. He was playing in another village and returned to Woodend very late. Dave and Anna were also very late. Dave stopped his car near the corner shop. The night was warm. Thanks, Dave, said Anna. It was a lovely day. I enjoyed it too, said Dave. He put his arm round her shoulders and kissed her. It was a quick kiss, but for Anna, it was wonderful. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The summer passed. The corner shop was always busy. Sometimes Dave opened the shop on Sundays, too. Anna earned a lot of money. Everyone thought that she was happy. But life was difficult for her. She liked Dave. He was her boss, and he was older than her. But Peter was her fiancé, and he was about the same age. Dave was quite rich, but Peter had no money. Dave bought Anna clothes, and he took her out. Peter did not buy her clothes and never took her anywhere. He was more interested in football. Anna did not like football. Now it was September. Peter played football every Saturday. One Saturday there was a big football match on television. Mr. Hart had the biggest television in the village, and he invited some people to his house. He invited Peter and Anna. On Friday, the day before the match, Anna was working in the shop all day. At five o'clock, she locked the shop door. Two minutes later, the bell rang, and Anna went to the door. There was a young man outside. He was carrying a small case. Hello, she said. Can I help you? I hope so, said the young man. I want to see Mr. Slayton. I'm afraid that the shop is closed now, said Anna. We're open tomorrow morning. But I've got an appointment, said the young man. Then Dave spoke behind Anna. She hadn't seen him. Yes, I've been waiting for you, said Dave. You're late. I'm very sorry, Mr. Slayton, said the young man. I was... Never mind, never mind, said Dave rudely. His rudeness surprised Anna. The young man seemed afraid. But can you see me now? he asked. Yes, said Dave. Come in. Dave turned to Anna. Anna, it's after five o'clock. You can go home now. I won't be long, said Anna. Dave was angry. Hurry up and go home, he said. But Anna wanted to stay. She wanted to know about the young man. The young man followed Dave to the back of the shop and into the special orders room. Another special order, another special customer. Anna waited. But soon it was half past five. Anna put her coat on and left the shop. She closed the door very loudly. Then she went round the corner and waited. Soon there was a noise. The young man was leaving the shop. Anna could not see him, but she could hear him. He was speaking to Dave. 
Are you sure? said the young man. What do you mean? asked Dave. Is this the only way? said the young man. Yes, it is, said Dave. Don't worry, everything will be all right. Goodbye. Anna heard the shop door close. She came round the corner and saw the young man. He was walking quickly to his car. Anna noticed immediately that he was not carrying his case. She followed him. Excuse me, she said. You've forgotten something. You've left something behind. The young man turned round. Anna stopped. Suddenly she was frightened. The young man's face was white. It was white with fear. Please go away, said the young man. Leave me alone. I want to go home. Leave me alone. He got into his car and drove off. Anna stood in the street and watched him. She was thinking. Why had the young man come to the corner shop? What was his special order? And why had he left his small case with Dave Slayton? The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The next day was the day of the big football match. Mr. Hart had invited about ten people. Anna did not watch the game. She was helping Mrs. Hart in the kitchen. They were making tea. It was a good game, and everyone was enjoying it. At half-time, Peter went into the kitchen. Why don't you come and watch the match, Anna? He said. It's really good. Come on. Anna laughed. No, thanks, she said. I'm helping Mrs. Hart. Look, here's the tea. Can you take it in to the others? OK, said Peter. It's a terrific match. Mike Bailey scored a great goal. Peter took the tea into the sitting room, and the second half of the match started. The second half was very exciting. Mike Bailey scored another goal after 20 minutes. The score was 2-0. Then the other side scored two quick goals. It was 2-2. There were only five minutes of the match left. Come on, shouted Peter. Come on, Mike, let's have another goal. In the last seconds of the match, Mike Bailey scored the winner. It was his third goal of the match. But something was wrong. The other team's goalkeeper was injured. Bailey had been very near the goalkeeper, and he had kicked the ball very hard. The ball had hit the goalkeeper's neck. Mrs. Hart and Anna came in from the kitchen. What's happened? said Anna. What's wrong? It's Brian Thomas, the goalkeeper, said Peter. He's injured. It was serious. The goalkeeper had broken his neck. Later they all watched the news on TV. They saw pictures of Mike Bailey's third goal. It was a great goal. They saw the ball hit the goalkeeper. It was an accident. The TV announcer said, And now over to our sports studio for an interview with Mike Bailey. They all watched the interview. The TV showed a picture of Mike Bailey and the interviewer. Mike, said the interviewer, three goals in one match. How do you feel about that? But Mike Bailey said nothing. He could not speak. He tried to speak, but he could not. It was terrible. The interviewer tried another question. Let me ask you about the third goal, Mike. It was a great goal, but how do you feel about the injury to Brian Thomas? It was a silly question. The injured goalkeeper would never play football again. Mike Bailey said nothing. He looked very ill. When the interview ended, Mr Hart turned off the TV. No one noticed that Anna had left the room. Mike Bailey had looked frightened. Anna was frightened too. Mike Bailey and Anna had met before, the day before, at the corner shop. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Anna did not know what to do. She was only seventeen, but sometimes she felt much older. 
She wanted to ask Dave about Mike Bailey and Greta Gordon. She wanted to know about special orders. She decided to wait. One day, Dave and Anna were alone in the shop. How's Peter? asked Dave. He's fine, thanks, said Anna. Dave smiled. Is he still playing football? Of course he is, said Anna. Dave laughed. You don't see him very much, do you, Anna? I see him three or four times a week, said Anna. What about weekends? Dave asked. Anna replied quickly. I don't see him much at weekends. He plays football then. When are you getting married? asked Dave. I don't know, she replied. We haven't decided yet. Perhaps next year. That's a long time. Dave smiled at Anna. Anna felt afraid. She also felt excited. She didn't know why. Sometimes you're bored, Anna, aren't you? said Dave. He looked into her eyes. Yes, said Anna, that's true. Why don't you come away with me for a weekend, said Dave. We can go to London. A weekend in London? Anna had only been to London once for a day. Anna was excited, but she was also afraid. I don't know, she said. I must think of Peter. Oh, forget him, said Dave. He'll never know. Come with me and we'll go to the best shops. We'll go to the best cinema. Will you come with me? Anna said nothing. Suddenly she had an idea. She looked at Dave. Perhaps I'll come with you, she said. Good, said Dave. That's great. But first, said Anna, I want to ask you something. What do you want to know? he said quietly. I want to know about your special orders. Very clever, said Dave. You're a village girl, but you're very clever, Anna. Village girls aren't stupid, said Anna. Now tell me about your special orders, then I'll come to London with you. Dave was angry. One question. You can ask me one question, he said. Quickly, Anna asked, Why do people come to you? Why... One question. Only one, shouted Dave. All right, said Anna, but don't shout. Tell me, why do people come to see you? Dave thought about his answer. He spoke quietly. They come for help, he said. They need help. And I give... No... I sell help to them. That's all. Anna didn't understand. What sort of help? she asked. One question, shouted Dave. I've answered your question. Anna said no more. She and Dave had made an agreement. Anna had asked her question. Dave had answered it. Dave had invited Anna to London for the weekend. And Anna went with him. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Anna enjoyed the weekend. They arrived in London late on Friday evening and stayed at a big hotel. On Saturday they went shopping and in the evening they went to a cinema. On Sunday they went to a park. They came back to Wood End on Sunday evening. It was the last Sunday in September. On Monday Anna went to the shop. It was not so busy now. Summer was over. Most of the customers were villagers. It was a cold autumn. On Monday evening Peter came to see Anna. Hello, said Anna. Did you win on Saturday? No, said Peter. We didn't win, and I didn't play. Anna was surprised. You didn't play? Why not? What was wrong? I didn't feel very well on Saturday morning. I stayed in Wood End. I was in the village all weekend. Anna's face was red. Her voice was quiet. 
Are you feeling better now? she asked. No, said Peter, and you know why. Anna tried to look surprised. Me, she said. Oh, Anna, said Peter, you know what's wrong. It's you and Dave Slatin. What do you mean, me and Dave Slatin? said Anna quickly. You went away with him on Friday evening. Someone saw you in Dave's car. Anna tried to explain. Oh, it's nothing, she said. Dave and I went. Shut up, said Peter. I don't want to know, Anna. Don't talk about it. But Peter, said Anna. Peter didn't listen. I know he's got a lot of money. He can take you to places. He's from a big city. I'm a poor village boy, Anna. But you must choose. You must choose between Dave and me. You can't have both of us. I know that, Peter, said Anna, and I don't want both of you. But listen, Peter, I want to tell you about Dave. There's something very strange about him. Dave, 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 Peter shouted. You talk about him all the time. I don't want to hear his name again. Peter turned round and walked out of the room. He left Anna's house. Now Anna was alone. She was very unhappy. She wanted to talk to Peter. She wanted to tell him about Dave. She wanted to tell him about Greta Gordon and about Mike Bailey. But Peter had left her. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. It was October. It was cold and wet. Anna was not very busy at the shop. She was very unhappy. She was a different girl. She seemed older. She didn't go out much. She looked ill. Most of the villagers knew that Anna had quarrelled with Peter. They also knew that she had been to London with Dave, but no one was able to help Anna. She did not talk to anyone. Before she had been a happy, smiling girl. Now she was sad and lonely. She went to the shop every day. She was waiting for another special customer. Anna did not wait long. It was the middle of the month. Anna was alone in the shop. It was almost lunchtime. A middle-aged gentleman came in. He was a big man with a very large moustache. He was well dressed, and he was carrying a large briefcase. "Good morning, miss," he said politely. "Good morning, sir," said Anna. "Can I help you?" Anna was very polite too. She was interested in this man. "I'm looking for Mr. David Slayton," said the man. Anna smiled. "Are you a salesman?" she asked. She knew that he was not a salesman. He didn't look like a salesman, but she wanted to talk to the man. The man smiled. "Yes, I am a salesman," he said. That was not true. Anna knew that the man was lying. Then she said, "Perhaps I can help you, sir. I usually speak to the salesman." She looked at the man's case. It had the letters A R I C S printed on it. Thank you," said the man very politely. "But I have a private appointment. I have come from London, and I must see Mr. Slayton." "I'm sorry," said Anna. "He's very busy at the moment, but I'll tell him you're here. What's your name, please?" The man smiled. "Roberts," he said. "Arthur Roberts." Anna went to the back of the shop. Dave was coming down the stairs. There's a man in the shop," said Anna. "He wants to speak to you." "Thanks," said Dave, and he went to the front of the shop. "Good morning, Mr. Reisman," said Dave. "I'm pleased to meet you." Anna listened. Reisman. The man's name was Reisman, not Roberts. What a liar! The man did not look at Anna. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Slayton," the man said. "Please come with me," said Dave. Mr. Reisman followed Dave. They went into the special orders room. A minute later, Dave came out. He came to the front of the shop. 
It's lunchtime, Anna, he said. You can go home now. Thanks, Dave, said Anna. I'm going in a few moments. Dave went back to the special orders room. Anna did not leave the shop. She waited. Anna wrote down the letters A R I C S. She understood A R, Arthur Reisman, but she did not understand I C S. At half past one, Anna heard noises. Mr. Reisman was leaving. Dave was talking. Thank you, Mr. Reisman, said Dave. And thank you, said Mr. Reisman. You have helped me a lot. Good, said Dave. Goodbye, Mr. Reisman. My assistant isn't in the shop, but you can open the door. Goodbye. Dave went upstairs, and Mr. Reisman came into the front of the shop. Anna was sitting quietly in a corner. Oh, said Mr. Reisman, I thought you'd gone home. No, she said. I decided to have lunch in the shop today. Anna and Mr. Reisman looked at each other. They didn't like each other. There was silence. Anna spoke first. Would you like to buy some bread, Mr. Roberts? she said. Reisman, my name is Reisman, said the man. Anna smiled. I'm so sorry, she said. Would you like to buy some homemade bread, Mr. Reisman? It looks delicious, said Mr. Reisman. He was very polite again. Yes, I'll take some, please. My wife will love it. Here you are, said Anna. She put the bread in a bag. Then she said, You can put it in your briefcase. My briefcase, said Mr. Reisman. I haven't got a briefcase. I think you've forgotten it, she said. I'll go and get it for you. Anna moved towards the back of the shop. Mr. Reisman stepped in front of her. He held her wrists. He was very strong. Listen to me, he said. I don't want that briefcase. Leave it there. All right, said Anna. Please let me go. You're hurting me. Mr. Reisman let go of Anna and turned towards the door. He left the shop hurriedly. He hadn't taken his bread with him. Anna watched Mr. Reisman leave. Her hands were still hurting five minutes later. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Anna waited for some news about Mr. Reisman. She remembered Greta Gordon. The film star had visited the corner shop. Later, there was news about her in a magazine. Mike Bailey had visited the corner shop too. Later, there was a lot of news about him on TV. And now Mr. Reisman had visited the corner shop. Anna was waiting for some news about him. All three visitors had been special customers. They had all seen Dave. They had all been in the special orders room. And they had all left something with Dave. Greta Gordon had left her diamond rings. Mike Bailey had left his case. Mr. Reisman had left his briefcase. Anna wanted to find out more about the three special customers. She thought about Mr. Reisman. His case had the letters A R I C S on it. She understood A-R, but what was I-C-S? Perhaps Mr. Reisman was a businessman, and I-C-S was his company. Anna looked in the newspapers, but she didn't find anything about I-C-S. She read the magazines. She listened to the radio. She watched TV. But there was nothing about I-C-S. Anna heard nothing. She saw nothing. Then she had an idea. She decided to go to London and find Arthur Reisman. It was a Friday. Early in the morning she left a note for Dave. She took the note to the shop. Dear Dave, it said, sorry I can't come in today. I'm going to Lydney. I'm buying some things for my wedding. Anna. The note did not tell the truth, but Anna didn't care. Anna took a bus to Lydney 
and then caught a train to London. She got to Paddington Station at midday. She got off the train and looked for a telephone box. The telephones were near to the entrance to the station, but the boxes were all full. She stood and waited. Then Anna saw the letters I.C.S. There they were. They were on a huge advertisement. Anna had found the answer to her problem. International Computer Services. I.C.S. Perhaps that was Mr. Reisman's company. Soon one of the phone boxes was empty. Anna rang the number. 222-8959. I.C.S. Can I help you? said a woman's voice. Yes, please, said Anna. I want to speak to Mr. Reisman, Mr. Arthur Reisman. I think he works at ICS. The woman laughed. Works here? Yes, he does, she said. He's the vice chairman of the company. Wait one moment, please. I'll get his secretary. Then there was another woman's voice on the phone. Mr. Reisman, secretary, can I help you? Yes, please, said Anna. I'd like to speak to Mr. Reisman. Who's calling, please? said the secretary. Mr. Reisman doesn't know my name, Anna replied. Is Mr. Reisman expecting your call? the secretary asked. No, he isn't, said Anna. I'm afraid he can't speak to you now, said the secretary. He's at a meeting now and he's flying to Switzerland in an hour's time. But I must speak to him for a few minutes, said Anna. The secretary became annoyed. That's impossible, she said, but I can take a message. No, thanks, said Anna. I'll call again next week. Will Mr. Reisman be back then? Yes, he will, replied the secretary. Goodbye. And she put the phone down. Anna had found Mr. Reisman's company, but she hadn't spoken to him. Anna spent the afternoon in London. She went to see a film. Then she had tea in a small cafe near Paddington Station. Her train left London at half-past six. She bought an evening newspaper and got on the train. Anna was tired, but she felt happy. After a few minutes, she looked at her newspaper. Anna was waiting for some news. There it was, on the front page. Private plane crash near London. Six dead, all from ICS. Six people were killed this afternoon in a plane crash at Enfield near London. The plane was flying to Switzerland. The passengers were all from International Computer Services, ICS. Among them was Mr. Alfred Gluck, the chairman of ICS. Mr. Arthur Reisman, vice chairman of ICS, told us, I'm lucky to be alive. I was at a meeting today. The meeting went on for a long time, and I didn't catch the plane. Mr. Reisman will probably be the new chairman of ICS. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Anna got home about ten o'clock. She turned on the radio and listened to the news. The chairman of ICS was dead, and Mr. Reisman was the new chairman. Anna didn't sleep that night. She was thinking about Dave Slayton and the special orders. What were they? What was Dave Slayton doing in that room? On Saturday morning she went to the shop. Dave said nothing to her. He was angry because Anna had not worked on Friday. He didn't ask about her day off and Anna didn't tell him about it. At eleven o'clock, Dave left the shop. He got in his car and drove off. Anna was alone. This was her chance. She went to the back of the shop and turned the handle of the locked door. But the special orders room was not locked. Dave had forgotten to lock it. Anna opened the door and went into the room. It was a small room, dark and hot. Anna turned on the light, but it was not a very strong light. She looked round the room. There was a small table, two old chairs, and a lot of boxes. That was all. Special orders, 
There were no order books, no papers, no pencils. Anna walked round the table. It was difficult because there were a lot of boxes on the floor. Anna opened one of the boxes and looked inside. She found some old magazines and newspapers. Underneath, there were some dirty old clothes. But underneath the clothes, she discovered some money, lots of money. British money, French money, American, German. There was money from all over the world. Anna was amazed. She had never seen so much money before. She looked round again, and found Mike Bailey's case. It was empty. Then she found Arthur Reisman's briefcase. That was empty too. Then Anna looked into a bigger box. Inside it were some dolls. With broken arms and legs, one of the dolls was very beautiful, but it had a broken arm. Anna put it on the table. Then Anna found a book about football. Inside there were some pictures of footballers, but the pictures were all torn. Anna put the book on the table. Anna looked into the box again, and found some little cars. Most of them were broken. She found a small model aeroplane. It was broken too. Anna put all these things on the table. What a strange collection! There was the money, the broken doll, the toy cars, the model aeroplane, and there was the football book with the torn pictures. Anna looked at the things on the table. What were they for? Why did Dave Slayton keep them in this locked room? Suddenly, Anna jumped. There was a noise behind her. Someone was standing at the door. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. What about the diamond rings? Said a voice. It was Dave Slayton. He was laughing. I left the door open for you, he said. I wanted you to go into this room this morning. Anna was frightened, but she tried not to show her fear. You haven't found the diamonds, Dave said again. Anna remembered Greta Gordon's diamond rings. Were they in this room too? Here, said Dave. He came into the room and picked up an old box. He took out the rings and threw them on the table. They aren't yours," said Anna. "They belong to Greta Gordon." "They belong to me," laughed Dave. "She gave them to me." "But why?" asked Anna. "Why? Why did Greta Gordon give you those diamonds and all this money? Who gave you the money?" "My special customers," said Dave. My special customers gave me the money. It's mine now. Mike Bailey and Mr. Reisman gave you all this money, asked Anna. Yes, said Dave. You have seen some of my special customers, not all of them. But why do they come? Anna asked again. These people come to me for help, replied Dave Slayton. I help them, and they pay me. But how do you help them? Asked Anna. Dave Slayton picked up the beautiful doll with the broken arm. Do you remember Joanna Lee? He asked Anna. Anna thought for a moment. Joanna Lee? She said. Yes, of course I remember her. She's the actress who broke her arm. Greta Gordon got her part. That's right, said Dave Slayton. This doll is Joanna Lee. Anna felt more afraid. What kind of man was Dave Slayton? Dave Slayton pointed to a torn photograph in the football book. "Who's that, Anna?" he asked. Anna remembered the face. She had seen it on TV. "Brian Thomas," she replied. "He's a goalkeeper." "He was a goalkeeper," said Dave Slayton. Anna was terribly frightened now. Dave Slayton was an evil man. 
Dave Slayton moved close to Anna. He picked up the broken aeroplane. And what do you think this is? he asked Anna. Anna knew the answer, but she was too afraid to speak. Dave Slayton took Anna's arm and held it tightly. Anna tried to move away. Dave Slayton laughed and held Anna more tightly. Listen, Anna, he said quietly. I want you. I need you. Marry me, Anna. Don't marry Peter. Marry me. No, no, she cried. Let me go. Let me go. But Anna, you still don't understand, said Dave Slayton. I have strange powers. I can give you everything you want. He looked into Anna's eyes. And my children will have these powers, too, he continued. I will give you money and diamonds. And you, Anna, you will give me children. Anna was terrified now. She kicked Dave Slayton very hard, and he let go of her hand. Anna moved quickly. She ran out of the special orders room, through the front of the shop, and out onto the street. She ran all the way home. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. When Anna got home, she felt terrible and went to bed. In the evening, Peter came to see her, but Anna was ill in bed. I'll come and see Anna tomorrow, Peter told Anna's mother. Again, Anna did not sleep all night. The next day, Sunday the 31st of October, was a terrible day for Wood End. Anna stayed in bed. She had a fever and her mother phoned the doctor. The doctor came immediately. Anna's very ill, said the doctor to Anna's mother. I'm worried. I don't know what's wrong with her. I'll come back again tonight. That afternoon, Peter came to Anna's house. He tried to speak to Anna, but she was too ill. He sat quietly beside her bed. At about seven o'clock, Peter heard shouting in the street. He went to the window and looked outside. People were running and shouting, Fire! 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 There's a fire at the corner shop! Peter ran out of Anna's house and into the street. There was a big fire on the corner. The shop was in flames. Nobody could see Dave Slayton. His car's here, said Mr Hart. Dave must be inside. Then the villagers saw him. He was standing at an upstairs window. Jump, Dave, they shouted. Jump! Save yourself! But Dave did not move. He was standing at the window, and he was laughing. Some of the women in the street started screaming. Mr Hart tried to run into the shop, but the others pulled him back. Flames were leaping up from the shop. The flames reached Dave Slayton, 